the wonderful freight train passing through Yarslow? No. Let me explain. Right, but I'm picking holes on things I've done here, so I don't think I'm picking on you or anybody else's layout in particular. These are things that I've done wrong and I've learnt now that should be right. So let's start with this. This engine is carrying E-Class head codes. Remember that video about head codes? If you haven't seen it yet, go and have a quick look. E-Class head codes, it's an express freight, partially fitted freight. Uh, this one is running probably nearer express passenger speeds. It's way too fast. Slow it down, let's get it running at the right speed. Now to be an E-Class freight train it must have four fitted vehicles at least behind the engine. So again there's that video on uh, wagon colours, go and have a quick look. Uh, the, the fitted ones tend to be the brown ones. This train's got two grey ones, two unfitted vans behind the train. Who knew? Can't do that. Must be fitted. So please, if you're going to have fitted freight trains, connect your fitted vehicles to the engine. Now we're talking here about the era of loose coupled freight trains. So the further down the train a wagon travels, the more snatch and jerk and bump and run you're going to get on the wagon. So your poor old goods br uh, brake uh, guard is going to get a pretty rough ride if he's not careful. Um, some loads need to be at the front of the train to minimise all that and one of the key ones is livestock. So if you've got any livestock vehicles, get them up behind the engine, best place for them. Similarly, if you've got wagons that are carrying delicate loads and they're in shock absorber wagons, kind of gives you a clue that it's a delicate load, they've got to be up front as well. No point sticking them in the middle of the train, you're just negating any benefit from the shock absorber wagons. Now some loads were dangerous, they, they travelled in their own vehicles. Uh, fuel oil like this tank, you could have gunpowder vans, well they were put into trains with barrier wagons, that is an empty wagon either side, so that if should anything happen to them, they didn't uh, damage, set fire, blow up and hurt the rest of the train. So you would have an empty barrier wagon either side of a petrol tank or an oil tank or a gunpowder wagon. Uh, don't put loaded wagons next to tanks. That's wrong. Now some loads were delicate for a different reason. Um, timber for argument's sake, you didn't want to get that wet. Uh, so it was tended to be sheeted over as in this wagon. But there's two problems here. One, this particular uh, wagon should be facing the other way so that the wind can't get under the sheet and blow the sheet away and secondly the load is overhanging the body therefore you need what's called a runner wagon either another open or a flat next to it or in this case on the left just to protect that overhanging load now I confess this is a moot point according to the book this wagon should also face the other way so that the wind can't get under the sheet but there are plenty of photographs around of half sheeted vans running both ways in trains so if you've got one of these as I have uh, I don't think too many people are going to pick you up on it. Here is something that uh, is, is wrong notice that the wagon the plate wagon on the left the load is cabled the barrels on the right are roped the logs in the middle have nothing please don't run your wagon loads not held on to the wagons it's an easy thing to do with chain, rope, whatever you want to do, but find out how it should be fixed. Fix it down. This wagon actually hasn't been uh, through the paint shop yet and hasn't been finished, but if I run it like this, this would be a definite no-no. Now here's one that we all do, and I'm no exception here without really thinking. Uh, this is an E-Class freight. This is a train that's laid on for the customers to transfer freight at a reasonably quick rate and therefore a reasonably expensive price to get commodities from A to B. These trains all had maximum loads so unless there were 
no loads for the day, um, you wouldn't get empty wagons. Occasionally, if there was a light load, there would be empty wagons attached to the rear, but empties in the middle of a fitted express freight. Yeah, I did this and realized actually when I was putting this video together that I'd got this wrong as well. So these things are easily done, but we shouldn't be doing them. This one is a definite no-no on our E-Class freight. It certainly wouldn't be carrying departmental non paying vehicles like these two engineers ballast wagons. Now here's one that's as common as engines without head codes and that is brake vans without lights. Uh, on a, a train that is not fully fitted there should be of course be a tail light on the brake van for the signalman to make sure it's complete. But there should also be two forward facing side lights uh, certainly in the BR era so that the engineman can see that the train is complete. So our freight train that looked really nice at the beginning turns out to have a dozen faults and they're things that we've all done, um, some of them we're still doing, some of them uh, we don't know we're doing them until somebody points them out and certainly a lot of them I've been doing until somebody points them out or you buy a book or you do some research or you, you talk to other people and you find out that what you think is a cracking looking train actually isn't and would never run like that. I would encourage you to do some research, find out what freight trains really looked like in whatever era you model and try and get your formations right. You'll be surprised how good the trains look when you get the formations right, when you compare them with real photographs. If you just throw a load of wagons together, it looks wrong. Hope that makes sense. Hope that's been helpful. See you soon. Thank <laughs> you.